Today, we look at the way the Western art world has depicted the working class and the preconceptions that shaped our political landscape. Spoiler alert, some are respectful, some are not. Hello everyone, this video covers a period in art history called realism. realism. The painting style you see from this era is pretty self-explanatory, but the piece we cover had serious social ramifications. Like, could you imagine having the audacity to depict working class women with dignity? I hope it's obvious that that's sarcasm. Don't take that out of context. So realism is a movement, quote, characterized by subjects painted from everyday life in a naturalistic manner, end quote. Does this style of painting sound like something that should have set off wealthy art patrons? I find the backlash that this art style received to be so ridiculous yet entirely believable. So in order to explore this concept in a more contained way, we are going to look at Jean-Francois Millet's work, The Gleaners. <laughs> This oil on canvas was completed in 1857 and is the result of a decade-long study that Millet did on the rural working class. The context of this work is that the gleaners, usually women and children, would go into the wheat fields at sunset and pick up each shaft of wheat that was missed in the original harvesting process. They would do this work as quickly as possible. To glean something comes from the Bible. Many Christian kingdoms had laws that would allow the poor to take a certain amount of crops from the fields. So by the biblical description, gleaning began as a small way of caring for the community. This would usually involve elderly, unmarried women, homeless, and immigrants. In this piece, Millet certainly focuses on these three women but he also gives you an idea of what their work must be like in this storied background. These are the harvesters back here, and we can infer from these huge haystacks that the gleaners have their work cut out for them. We can also guess, based on the scale of the buildings in the background, that these women have a huge area of land to cover. While pure objectivity is impossible, I do believe this is a very honest attempt at depicting this lifestyle. True to the realism name that this piece falls under, the colors in this piece don't seem to romanticize or disparage this kind of work. Millet does not pretend to know how the women feel about their job either, only to represent the physical act of what they do. Is this offensive? The fact that I have to ask this question, in theory, no. But as I've said before, never say never. In order to try and gauge the public perception of this piece at the time it came out, let's compare the gleaners to a portrait of a working class man that Anibale Karachi, I'm sorry, Bruno, I just can't, I can't roll my R's, produced in the Baroque era called the Bean Eater. This representation may look innocuous at first glance, but remember what Baroque paintings looked like. Every single decision that went into making this piece was done with the intention of pointing out the fact that one, this man was lower class, and two, to use him as the butt of a joke. This artist's style in The Bean Eater shifts dramatically from his usual depictions of figures he considers important. It's painted very crudely. Karachi places us directly across from him, showing us sloppy eating habits, bean sludge dripping from this spoon, mouth ajar. He even looks like he's caught off guard. He's been shown in this way like he's doing something wrong and been caught in the act. To further the disrespect, Karachi tells us through the walls of this man's home, which are crumbling, and the wear on his hat, that he does not have ample finances. Yet here he is with a full spread of food. The period I would tell us that this man should be seen as a lazy freeloader. Does this sound familiar? Because we can see a similar discourse in our modern world. Beyond being a disrespectful representation, the bean eater was an excuse for those with money to hoard it. This painting acted as a way to dehumanize the working class and justify the poor treatment of those who felt within it. Now, for clarification, there were several Baroque artists who depicted the working class with dignity, but they had not yet been shown in a working environment like the gleaners in the West. So when the aristocratic class of 1800s France 
were faced with workers who were depicted doing backbreaking labor with dignity when they were reminded that their country runs on the backs of the working class. <laughs> Needless to say, this piece was met with a lot of pushback. Pieces like The Gleaners laid the groundwork for socialist policies and created a conversation between art and politics. This is a relationship that will become increasingly intertwined and convoluted the more we study going forward. Thank you for joining me this week. This piece is very special to me, so I hope you enjoyed learning about it, and I will see you next time.